I'm going to take one more shot at this uh, flux integral. Same surface, same vector field as before, but this time I want to do it by parameterizing the surface. Okay, remember, this is our surface. Now, we've, we, one time we did it by projecting down the y-axis, and we integrated over this domain, which was a parallelogram. And one time we projected down the um, x-axis and integrated over this domain, which was another parallelogram. Well, what we can do now is just sort of begging to be projected down the z-axis, so then we could integrate over this square domain. So if I write z as a function of x and y, I'll be able to get a really easy parameterization for this, this vector field. So z is equal to x plus y, just rearranging this. Okay, since z is a function of x and y, then I can get an easy parameterization in terms of just x and y x can play itself, y can play itself, and z can be x plus y. So there's my parameterization. Of course, the bounds on x are x goes from 0 to 1, and y goes from 0 to 2, and that creates my surface. So I've got my parameterization. Now that I have my parameterization, I know I'm going to integrate over this rectangle in the xy plane. Then I just need to calculate um, the partial of r with respect to the first parameter, which is 1, 0, and 1, and the partial of r with respect to the second parameter, which is y, so we get 0, partial of this respect to y is 1, and partial of this respect to y is 1. So then r sub x cross r sub y, we can find that by just crossing um, those two vectors. Let's see, we have i times 0 minus 1, so that's negative 1. And we have j times 0 minus 1, so that's negative 1. And k times um, 1 minus 0 would be 1. So that is going to give us a normal to the surface. And then our area conversion factor is going to be the length of that normal, which is this squared plus this squared plus this squared is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. So we have the square root of 3 as that length there. So um, we have um, everything that we need, I think, to set up this integral. Because we want to do a flux integral, we, um, we'll just integrate over our region, which um, if we do the x first, x is going from 0 to 1, and y is going from 0 to 2. And um, next step, we need to, oh, what we're really trying to do is set up the integral over the surface of um, bold f dotted with the unit normal d sigma. So we're just going to assemble all of these pieces so that we can do this integral over this flat region in parameter space here. So we do these bounds. We've got to write f now in terms of uh, x and y. So we have y, x squared, and then z we can find from our parameterization. Right? Our parameterization says that the z value is x plus y. So we've written our vector field, bold f, in terms of just the two parameters, um, x and y. And now we need a unit normal. We figured out that this was normal. And it needs to be a unit normal, so I'll divide by its length. And then d sigma, a little patch of area on the surface, is equal to the square root of 3 times the corresponding patch times that corresponding patch um, in the domain of my parameterization. OK, now ooh, I need to check that my normal is pointing in the right direction. It's very specific. It says the normal that's inward toward the z-axis. But if you think about our surface, again, remember our picture was something like this. So we had this surface here. And either we have the normal that's coming out and down away from the z-axis or back and up towards the z-axis. And um, in this case, this is, yeah, we're moving back in the x-direction and back in the y-direction and up in the z-direction. That must be the normal that's pointing in towards the z-axis and not the one that's moving away from the z-axis. So we've got the correct normal. That's worth checking. If you're, if you're off, you're going to be off by a negative sign, right? So you're using the wrong normal for the problem. OK, so what integral do we actually have to do then? Well, we just have to do, uh, let's see, the square roots cancel. And I just need to compute this dot product, so 0 to 1 and 0 to 2. Uh, y times negative 1 would be negative y, and negative 1 times x squared would be negative x squared, and then 1 times x plus y would be plus x plus y, and we've got to integrate 
with respect to y and then with respect to x. Notice that the y's cancel, so this is actually a pretty simple integral. In fact, we have this x minus x squared in this integral with respect to y. That's constant, so let me pull it out here. So we have x minus x squared, just pulling that constant out, the integral from 0 to 1. And then we have the integral from 0 to 2, uh, dy. And then um, once we've calculated that integral, that's dx. Of course, this integral is easy because the antiderivative of 1 dy is just y. So we have y evaluated at 2 minus y evaluated at 0. That's 2 minus 0. It's 2. So this integral here is 2. So just pull that constant out. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus um, x squared dx. And the antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. And the antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed. I've got to evaluate that between 0 and 1, and then take that whole thing times 2. Of course, when I plug in 0, I don't get anything to worry about, so I just have to worry about plugging in 1. Um, so let's see, when I plug in 1, I get 1 half minus 1 third. And 1 half minus 1 third is 1 sixth, so we have 2 times 1 sixth, which is 1 third, which, since we've done this integral three times, we now recognize that that's the same answer we've gotten each time, which is 1 third.